Hey there, welcome to my channel. Nurse ME here. I have picked some practice questions for you. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button. And do not forget to leave a comment below with how many questions you got right. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm here to help. A patient with newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes presents with polyuria, polydipsia, and weight loss. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Encourage a low-carbohydrate diet. B. Initiate an insulin infusion. C. Administer oral hypoglycemic agents. D. Provide a high-protein snack. The correct answer is B. Initiate an insulin infusion. Insulin therapy is essential to control blood glucose levels in type 1 diabetes and manage acute symptoms. A 55-year-old male with hyperthyroidism is experiencing palpitations and anxiety. What medication is most appropriate for initial management of these symptoms? A. Methimazole B. Propranolol C. Levothyroxine D. Radioactive iodine The correct answer is B. Propranolol. Propranolol, a beta blocker, helps manage symptoms such as palpitations and anxiety in hyperthyroidism. A patient with Addison's disease presents with hypotension, hyperpigmentation, and hyponatremia. What is the primary treatment? A. Administer fludrocortisone. B. Increase dietary sodium intake. C. Provide insulin therapy. D. Administer cortisol. The correct answer is D. Administer cortisol. Cortisol replacement is crucial in Addison's disease to manage adrenal insufficiency and associated symptoms. A patient with Cushing syndrome is exhibiting truncal obesity, purple striae, and hypertension. What is the most appropriate initial diagnostic test? A. 24-hour urine-free cortisol test. B. Serum aldosterone level. C. Thyroid function tests. D. Fasting blood glucose. The correct answer is A. 24-hour urine-free cortisol test. The 24-hour urine-free cortisol test helps confirm Cushing syndrome by measuring excess cortisol levels. A 60-year-old female with primary hyperparathyroidism presents with hypercalcemia. What dietary advice should the nurse provide? A. Increase calcium-rich foods. B. Avoid high-phosphorus foods. C. Increase fluid intake. D. Decrease vitamin D intake. The correct answer is C. Increase fluid intake. Increased fluid intake helps prevent kidney stones and manage hypercalcemia in primary hyperparathyroidism. A patient with newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes is starting metformin. What is the most important instruction the nurse should provide? A. Take the medication on an empty stomach. B. Report any unusual muscle pain immediately. C. Avoid foods high in potassium. D. Monitor for signs of hypoglycemia. The correct answer is B. Report any unusual muscle pain immediately. Metformin can cause lactic acidosis, a serious side effect, which may present as unusual muscle pain. A patient with Graves' disease is scheduled for a thyroidectomy. What preoperative intervention is essential to minimize complications? A. Administer propranolol. B. Provide a high iodine diet. C. Start levothyroxine therapy. D. Provide potassium supplements. The correct answer is A. Administer propranolol. Propranolol helps control symptoms of hyperthyroidism and reduce the risk of thyroid storm during surgery. 
A patient with diabetes insipidus, DI, is admitted with severe dehydration. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer thiazide diuretics. B. Initiate intravenous normal saline. C. Restrict fluid intake. D. Provide potassium supplements. The correct answer is B. Initiate intravenous normal saline. Intravenous normal saline is necessary to correct dehydration and maintain fluid balance in diabetes insipidus. A patient with acromegaly presents with headache, visual disturbances, and increased shoe size. What diagnostic test should be performed to confirm the diagnosis? A. Serum growth hormone level. B. Serum cortisol level. C. Serum thyroxine level. D. Fasting glucose level. The correct answer is A. Serum growth hormone level. Elevated serum growth hormone levels help confirm the diagnosis of acromegaly. A patient with hypothyroidism is starting levothyroxine therapy. What instruction should the nurse emphasize regarding medication administration? A. Take the medication with food. B. Avoid taking the medication with iron supplements. C. Take the medication at bedtime. D. Discontinue the medication if symptoms improve. The correct answer is B. Avoid taking the medication with iron supplements. Iron supplements can interfere with the absorption of levothyroxine and should be taken at different times. A 25-year-old female with PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome is experiencing irregular menstrual cycles and obesity. What is the first-line treatment to regulate her cycles? A. Oral contraceptives. B. Insulin therapy. C. Metformin. D. Spironolactone. I will skip the answer for this question. Pause the video and leave a comment below with your answer. I will reveal the correct answer at the end of this video. A patient with pheochromocytoma presents with episodic hypertension, sweating, and palpitations. What is the first step in the management of this condition? A. Start alpha-adrenergic blockers. B. Perform a CT scan of the abdomen. C. Begin beta-blocker therapy. D. Administer corticosteroids. The correct answer is A. Start alpha-adrenergic blockers. Alpha-adrenergic blockers help control blood pressure and manage symptoms in patients with pheochromocytoma. A 70-year-old male with a history of hypertension and heart failure is diagnosed with primary aldosteronism. What is the most appropriate treatment option? A. Spironolactone. B. Lisinopril. C. Furosemide. D. Metaprolol. The correct answer is A. Spironolactone. Spironolactone is a potassium-sparing diuretic that antagonizes aldosterone, reducing symptoms of primary aldosteronism. A patient with SIDH, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, presents with hyponatremia and fluid retention. What is the first-line treatment? A. Fluid restriction. B. Sodium supplements. C. Increase fluid intake. D. Potassium supplements. The correct answer is A. Fluid restriction. Fluid restriction helps manage hyponatremia by reducing fluid retention in SIDH. A patient with hypothyroidism presents with myxedema coma. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Initiate intravenous levothyroxine. B. Administer oral antithyroid medications. C. Start high-dose corticosteroids. D. Provide supportive care only.
The correct answer is A. Initiate intravenous levothyroxine. Intravenous levothyroxine is essential for rapid treatment of myxedema coma to restore thyroid hormone levels. A patient with hyperaldosteronism is experiencing hypokalemia and muscle weakness. What is the best initial treatment option? A. Administer potassium supplements. B. Increase sodium intake. C. Restrict fluid intake. D. Start calcium supplements. The correct answer is A. Administer potassium supplements. Potassium supplements help correct hypokalemia, a common symptom in hyperaldosteronism. A patient with a thyroid nodule is being evaluated for possible malignancy. What diagnostic procedure is most appropriate for determining the nature of the nodule? A. Fine needle aspiration biopsy. B. Thyroid function tests. C. Serum calcitonin levels. D. Radioactive iodine uptake scan. The correct answer is A. Fine needle aspiration biopsy. Fine needle aspiration biopsy provides a tissue sample to evaluate for malignancy in a thyroid nodule. A patient with Hashimoto's thyroiditis is experiencing fatigue, weight gain, and dry skin. What is the mainstay of treatment? A. Antithyroid medications. B. Radioactive iodine therapy. C. Levothyroxine. D. Beta blockers. The correct answer is C. Levothyroxine. Levothyroxine replaces deficient thyroid hormone levels in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, alleviating hypothyroid symptoms. A patient presents with sudden onset severe headache, vision changes, and a history of pituitary adenoma. What is the immediate nursing action? A. Administer acetaminophen. B. Perform a lumbar puncture. C. Initiate dopamine agonist therapy. D. Prepare for emergent surgery. The correct answer is D. Prepare for emergent surgery. Sudden severe headache and vision changes may indicate pituitary apoplexy, requiring urgent surgical intervention. A patient with hyperglycemia and type 2 diabetes is being started on insulin therapy. What is the best approach to educate the patient about insulin administration? A. Use a sliding scale insulin regimen. B. Provide a fixed dose insulin schedule. C. Teach carbohydrate counting and insulin dosing. D. Focus on long-acting insulin only. The correct answer is C. Teach carbohydrate counting and insulin dosing. Carbohydrate counting helps patients adjust insulin doses based on their meal intake, improving glucose control. A patient with hyperthyroidism presents with severe agitation, high fever, and tachycardia. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Thyroid storm. B. Myxedema coma. C. Addisonian crisis. D. Hypoglycemic shock. The correct answer is A. Thyroid storm. Thyroid storm is a life-threatening condition in hyperthyroidism characterized by severe agitation, fever, and tachycardia. A patient with hypercalcemia and fatigue is diagnosed with primary hyperparathyroidism. What is the most definitive treatment? A. Oral calcium supplements. B. Thiazide diuretics. C. Parathyroidectomy. D. Corticosteroids. The correct answer is C. Parathyroidectomy. Parathyroidectomy removes the overactive parathyroid glands and is the definitive treatment for primary hyperparathyroidism. A 30 year old female presents with hirsutism, 
obesity, and amenorrhea. She is diagnosed with PCOS. What medication can be used to help manage her symptoms? A. Metformin. B. Levothyroxine. C. Spironolactone. D. Methimazole. The correct answer is A. Metformin. Metformin improves insulin sensitivity and helps manage symptoms such as hirsutism and obesity in PCOS. A patient with acromegaly has been treated with surgery but still has elevated growth hormone levels. What medication can help control the excess hormone secretion? A. Octreotide. B. Prednisone. C. Levothyroxine. D. Methimazole. The correct answer is A. Octreotide. Octreotide is a somatostatin analog that inhibits growth hormone secretion, used to control acromegaly symptoms post-surgery. A patient with chronic adrenal insufficiency is admitted with weakness and hypotension. What is the most important treatment to prevent an adrenal crisis? A. Increase dietary sodium intake. B. Administer intravenous hydrocortisone. C. Provide oral antithyroid medications. D. Initiate intravenous normal saline. The correct answer is B. Administer intravenous hydrocortisone. Intravenous hydrocortisone is essential for preventing an adrenal crisis by replacing deficient corticosteroids in adrenal insufficiency. Thank you very much.